mutant spiders, alien spiders, big ass spiders. Who doesn't love a good spider monster movie? In just the past few years, we've had everything from camel spiders to ice spiders to 3D spiders to, well, you get the idea. With some spider movies, they try to scare you. It seems the majority of them try to mix in a healthy dose of humor, like this week's movie, Arachnia. Arachnia is a 2003 sci-fi horror film from director Brett Piper. The movie opens with this fancy light tunnel. Ah, to hell with it. A toy airplane is flying through a meteor shower. Inside the plane are a bunch of college kids on their way to Arizona to investigate fossils for a class project. Right away, we're introduced to the characters. Arrogant professor, smart chick, comic relief dork, leader, and dumbbell hot chicks. <laughs> That's stupid. I mean, a star is bigger than a planet. Everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah. Chandra goes to talk to the pilot, Sean. A meteor slams into the ground nearby, which causes the plane to crash. Deke wakes up, panics, and jumps out of the plane, leaving everyone else behind. Hate him yet? Don't worry. You will. Everyone else wakes up and starts to evacuate. I guess Chandra thinks that plane crashes are hilarious. They escape just in time before the plane explodes. Deke, realizing he's been a giant douche, acts like he was thrown from the plane and proceeds to feel up the girls. Oh, steady me. Uh, what mm. happened to you? Mm. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I got thrown from the plane. They walk to try to find some help while being watched by some giant spiders. Is it much further, Papa Smurf? Not far now. This isn't funny. How much further, Papa Smurf? Not far now. Is it much further, Papa Smurf? <laughs> Two stupid little bitches, shut up! They find an old cabin they can use for shelter. Kelly finds an old bathtub and does what anyone would do after a near-fatal plane crash. Oh, a bath? I would kill for a bath right now. You're not taking a bath. Why not? We've got water. We've got fire. And a tub. And a bucket. Trina's helping Kelly with her bath while Deke continues to be annoying. Sit. I mentioned this movie's wonderful. Deke can't take it anymore, so he goes for a walk. Moses, the owner of the cabin, finds Deke spying on the girls. He goes inside to threaten the group for trespassing, and so we can see Kelly naked again. You there! Stand up! <laughs> Just hold on a second. <sighs> well, it's off my legs and call me Stumpy. If you're gonna have trespassers, this is the kind to have. Thank you. Moses brings the group out to his garage where he has the corpse of one of the spiders. The professor doesn't believe that it's real. No insect has ever grown larger than a foot in length. Some professor he is, he doesn't know that an arachnid isn't an insect. Moses brings everyone into the main house but leaves the professor in the barn. Chandra can't sleep because Kelly and Trina are doing... fun stuff. <laughs> You ever do it with another girl? I don't think so. Good grief, even the spiders in this movie are peeping toms. I like to watch. Moses sees the spider and tries to shoot it. Thinking it's the spider from the barn, he shoots it. The professor sees the inside and realizes that this thing's for real. Moses tells Sean he thinks the meteor crash woke up the spiders that have been living underground. He and Sean then go to investigate the crash site to see for themselves. They get there and find a big hole in the ground. Sean and Moses go inside the cave. Sean goes back to the truck to get a flashlight, but when he returns, Moses is being attacked by one of the spiders. I'm not sure what happens to Moses, but the spider does crawl off with a doll that kinda looks like him. Sean goes back to the house to get everyone so they can escape. Kelly's locked herself in the bathroom, so he has to break the door down and drag her out. This is more embarrassing than having a room full of guys ogle you naked at gunpoint. Deke goes for the truck, but the spiders attack. They pull him out and rip the Deke claymation action figure in half. So Deke's dead and... nope. 
The rest of the group goes inside. The spiders try to break in, but they fight them off. Well, not so much fight them off as much as throw books at the floor. Chandra stabs one of them in the eye and it leaves. The truck's totaled, so they're stuck at the house. Sean looks for supplies and finds a chainsaw, gas, and dynamite. Well, really they're road flares, but we'll make believe they're dynamite. He also finds a shovel that's property of Edgewood Studios. Sean's trying to come up with an exit strategy. Now if we had a phone, we could call for help, but... No one thought to use a phone until now? Sean calls 911 and tells him about the spiders, but they don't believe him. Chandra then calls her father, a colonel in the military, and uses a different tactic. Daddy! Oh my god, Daddy! You are so right! I need help! No, I'm not in Arizona. The plane was forced down. No, I'm not hurt. But you were so right about him. He's a monster. He's gone berserk. He tried to rape me. There'll be a fleet of fighter planes in the air in 60 seconds. Trust me. The group reinforces the house so they can survive until help arrives. Sean digs a gasoline trench around the house while Kelly makes some Molotov cocktails. Sean sits on the roof to keep lookout. Chandra visits him with some coffee. He's sitting on the roof. Where does he place the thermos without it sliding off? The spiders finally attack. Aw, shit, chainsaw spider fight. The spider knocks the chainsaw out of his hand, so he blows it up with dynamite. Good to know you can survive a dynamite blast if you're at least three feet away. That must be the weakest dynamite in the world. It didn't even damage the roof. Sean gets down and fights the spiders on the ground with the help of the girls. One of the spiders breaks into the house, and Professor Dickhead pushes Kelly into it to save his life. Sean and the group then go to the cave to rescue her. They head out to the cave, and it's morning? And how long does it take for the Air Force to get here? Sean, Chandra, and Trina go into the cave while the professor waits outside. He tries to run away, but the spiders kill him. They find the main chamber where the queen is laying her eggs. Some main chamber. It's only got like three spiders in it. They find Moses and Kelly covered in packing foam. Moses wakes up and some baby spiders start hatching inside of him. This wakes up the other spiders and the group has to fight them off. With Kelly free, the group escapes the cave. Hold on, he just rescued Kelly, the brunette. Why is he carrying Trina, the blonde? They escape just in time as the military moves in to blow up the spiders. They do whatever I do when I see a bug. Kill it with fire! The group heads off at the colonel, but of course, some of the spiders survived. Meanwhile, I think you girls need another bath. The movie was filmed mostly in Vermont in 2003. The exteriors, such as the house, were shot in Vermont, while many of the interiors were shot in a warehouse in Edgewood Studios. The wrecked airplane was used in another Edgewood movie, Icebreaker. The scene where Deke is being attacked in the truck by the spiders... The teeth ripping into the roof was actually one of the crew with a pickaxe. They always intended on destroying the truck for the movie, and since they had such a low budget, they couldn't afford to destroy a working truck. The truck they had never ran, so anytime you see it moving, it's because they pushed it into frame. In the beginning when Chandra's laughing, it's because Sean nearly broke off part of the door, and they didn't have time to reshoot. When Sean's getting water, Chandra talks about a movie she saw. Lovely. Saw a movie once about a house with haunted drains, and that's what came out of the pipes. This is in reference to one of director Brett Piper's other movies, Drainiac. The spider blood was made by mixing pudding with wallpaper paste. The roof was actually just a roof that was set on the ground. The chimney was made out of painted styrofoam cut to look like bricks. The entire cave was the same 30-foot portion used over and over. Every time they needed a new location, they just changed the lighting. When the group fell down the hole, they were just filmed from above while being dragged by their feet. The soldiers at the end were just a bunch of local high school kids. The actors and actresses didn't do much beyond the film. David Bunce, who played the professor, is currently on a show called Super Knocked Up. Bevan McGraw, who played Trina, and Irene Joseph, who played Chandra, haven't done a film since this one. Alexis Young, who played Kelly, did three more films, Chainsaw Sally, Two Front Teeth, and Hollow's Point before retiring from acting to become a model. Rob Monkowitz did four more films, Screaming Dead, Bite Me, Shaka Rama, and Bacterium, all of them with Brett Piper directing. Director Brett Piper had a background in working with miniatures, so he did all the mini effects himself. He hand animated all the spiders, and even the little things like the meteor flashes in the beginning of the film, he did frame by frame. There were some really good mini composite shots too, like when Moses is unveiling the spider in the barn, this half of the screen is a miniature. They did have bigger spiders, but mostly just the head and legs. They shot those scenes so you could only see those parts and not the body. Some of those scenes with the miniatures on a background, the background was just a photograph. A lot of people complain the stop motion effects are awful and they make the movie look fake. 
I don't know, the stop motion for me makes it feel like an homage to those monster films from the 50s and 60s. Even though it was made in the 2000s, it has the charm of those old films like The Black Scorpion, Monster from Green Hell, and Dinosaurus. But while big budget movies are using CGI more and more, I feel to a certain degree that it's stifling creativity. I'm also not saying that CGI is easy, I know how incredibly difficult and tedious it can be to animate something. I'm just saying that anymore, it's starting to become a crutch. I realize that Sci-Fi and the Asylum have been doing a lot of CGI-heavy monster movies, but here's a movie from 10 years ago, using a method from decades ago, that I think in its own way, looks better. You gotta be quiet, okay? <laughs>